Hello, I'm Bob Herrera, Superintendent of Farmington Public Schools, and I'd like to welcome you to Friday Update. Um, to begin our discussion today, I'd like to allow each of our participants to introduce themselves. So I'll start to my left. Roisin Hunter, fifth grade teacher at Wood Creek. Margaret Hendrickson, Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Hello, I'm Rhonda Henry, Principal of Longacre Elementary School. Today we have a, a few questions that our panelists or our participants will respond to. Uh, most regarding our LMS system and, and how the product canvas is working and their experiences with it um, through the beginning of the school year. So I'll, I'll begin, first question is for Margaret. Margaret, can you give us a brief overview of what Canvas is? So Canvas is a learning management system and its intent is to be a digital learning environment. So teachers use it to develop content, um, provide communication to students. Um, students use it as a way to receive and, and get content as well as to interact with their peers, um, as well as a place for them to submit work, um, receive feedback on their work. It's also a tool where the teacher communicate with the families and the families can communicate with the teachers. So it tends to be everything all in one. People tend to refer to it as a one-stop shop. Now, does it do everything? No, nope. we know 7-Eleven you know, doesn't provide everything, but Canvas allows us to do almost everything we need to do in one platform because it also allows us to integrate with other apps and tools our students are used to using like Flipgrid or Padlet. So it allows us to deliver instruction and for students to receive instruction. So those apps like you just mentioned, yep. what, what exactly are those apps that we hear you talk about? How, how, do, how when you say students are using those, what, how, are, how are they using so them? The, one of the really important parts of um, good online learning or in-person learning is interactivity. So how do we get students <coughs> to have discussions? How do we get them to share their, hear, um, share their thinking and see the thinking of others? So like Padlet is almost like a virtual sticky note app where, where students can add comments to questions or add ideas and do a brainstorm. So it's like a, a board with sticky notes. Um, there's something called a jam board which we also integrate into canvas which is like an open whiteboard where it's another you can do sticky notes you can draw so that it creates a common learning space for ideas to be shared and connections to be made okay. that would be some examples so 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 as i try to understand this and get my hands around the the learning management system or canvas so that's basically a, a tool that allows our teachers or staff to find these apps and, and other tools and resources for students to learn. So really, we're, we're building the learning management system mm -hmm. with, with the, the tools and resources we want our students to have. Yep. So another district may be using different tools. Um, grade levels may be using different tools. So sure. we do get to personalize it yes. a little bit for Farmington and, and to meet our needs and our, our students' needs. Yep. Good. Good. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Next question is for Roisin. We know that all elementary staff have been using Canvas to support learning at a distance. How do you see this tool being used as we transition to in-person? Good question. Um, well, I, going based on what Margaret said, um, I think one fabulous thing about um, Canvas is that you can personalize learning. So I think it's great for asynchronous learning when our kids are back in the building and teachers need to pull some, some small groups or do some one-on-one -on -one instruction socially distance, of course. Um, it gives the other kids a chance to be able to be working on something that's engaging, um, that's interactive, and that's not just, uh, it's not just looking at a computer and answering questions. It's actually mm -hmm. engaging. And when we have the opportunity to incorporate all of those apps, now we have Scholastic that we can incorporate. There's so many great apps. And because it's a hub, there's less time uh, taken from the teacher to work with the student to help. I can't get this. I can't do that. Everything's on one area. And the lower, the, the lower L kids can do it, they can get on, and so can the upper L kids. And, and everything is right there for them. And I think it's, I think it's a benefit for the teachers. And um, it's so organized. Our grades are in there, you know, emails. Kids can e email back and forth to the teachers, the parents, um, announcements, newsletters. It's just all encompassing. And I think it'll be great when we come back. So, so if, if Margaret and, and I were your students. Yes. You, you could possibly assign different apps to us absolutely. based on what our needs yep. and interests are as well, yep. skill level. Absolutely, and different assignments. Also, when you go to create an assignment, there's an option that, that says who are you, you know, um, assigning it to. So we can, I can even create groups within Canvas. of a, learn, you know, a module can be directed to a certain group of kids. So absolutely, it can be personalized. And would you see it then being used in the afternoon for absolutely. if there was any asynchronous experiences in the in-person That would be great, yep. I think it's a, yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Rhonda, 
we know that Canvas has required supports um, for staff. Each building has a teacher leader who is serving as an LMS building lead. How has this support impacted Canvas implementation in your building? So our LMS teacher leads have been instrumental in implementing Canvas. And if you look at where we were um, August 24th and where we are now, we could not be there without our LMS teacher leads. And we, our LMS teacher leads are meeting individually with teachers and also providing group sessions on what different features that are available in Canvas. And what's so great to see is that they're customizing it mm -hmm. to meet the needs the, the personal needs and also instructional needs of our teachers. And it's, it's neat to see the personalities of our teachers coming forth in their Canvas page mm -hmm. because of what our LMS teacher leads are doing. They're really listening. You know, do you want, what are you using your Canvas page for? Mm -hmm. And then setting it up at, with either pages or modules. And then being a teacher, um, teaching students all day as the lead, um, they're also able to forecast I used this um, feature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and these are some pros to using this feature. Here are some glitches that you might encounter, but they're forecasting it for our teachers. So that's really helped in layer the new um, the, the features for uh, Canvas. And I think it's putting our teachers at ease, knowing mm -hmm. that our LMS teacher leads are also teachers. And, and that's so credible. And again, it's, uh, what a, it's a great example of what can happen when we put teachers leading teachers. Absolutely. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly with that statement. I think um, when we have practitioners um, explaining things and talking about their experiences, mm -hmm. it means a lot more to, to our community and, and, and to staff and, and mm -hmm. to everybody. Hence, that's why I have our practitioners here with me today. Um, you, you're, you're the credible source coming out to talk about these things. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm a distance from these, these tools and the products, but, uh, but it, it's been great um, for me to see um, you know our teachers' response to this and the amount of growth we've made. Certainly, we, we, we I think we would all agree that that you know Rosina, as you described, suddenly we have a tool that allows us to do this many things in terms of instructional deliveries, um, and the fact that we noted that we almost have to build it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we, we we certainly should recognize the amount of work and effort mm -hmm. that's going into that. Yes, mm -hmm. a great tool. Um, we, we could we could probably utilize even even more as we move down this path, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but a, a lot of work and effort to develop because it's not a tool that just provides the instructional delivery. We're, we're building all those Absolutely. things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Rasheen, um, you're at you're at the heart of this. So you're you're the practitioner that that's helping lead this. <laughs> yep. Um, as a building LMS lead, what has your experience been as a lead um, okay. helping take us through this? huge transition um, in the district. Okay, it's been, um, well, I, I naturally love to help people. So, um, and I love to serve people. So that, um, that comes natural to me. So I have enjoyed it, um, but I'll be honest, it was a lot at first. You know, it was a lot for the leads um, because we didn't have a lot of time before school started. But um, what I have loved, and a lot of what you said, Rhonda, I have, um, I have helped not just my staff, I've helped other people have reach, reached out to me, middle mm -hmm. school, high school, I've done meets on the weekends to, to help people. I don't mind at all. Um, but I love the collaboration that it has created amongst not just grade level or within the school, but teachers from other buildings collaborating. And we have a, um, a Facebook page, a Facebook technology page, a Farmington one. And I love seeing how many people are posting things. Hey, um, kindergarten teacher, I, I created this. I figured out this is how you do this. And, and people just coming together. And I have to say the teachers really rose to the challenge for this. Mm -hmm. Um, but I love leading. I have, you know, I check in with the staff. I do daily check-ins with them or weekly check-ins. And um, I'm still helping. I'm still making appointments on Fridays for people mm -hmm. to come in and, and work. And I've done some virtual um, sessions also. Um, I love it. I think that, um, I think we have an excellent staff. And um, what I love most is that they're student-centered. So everything that they do as I'm helping them build, yeah. they're like, will this work for my kids? Will this work for my kids? And I love that that's that's what the, is at the forefront. Will this work for the kids? Because ultimately, it's about student success. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, sharing that perspective as well. Um, Rhonda, how have you been using Canvas as a building administrator? So I've been using it in a variety of different ways. Um, number one was to have a one-stop shop for the staff. And so creating a staff page, which I know other administrators <coughs> have done as well, 
so one place where teachers can go and they can see the weekly news, the coming attractions, the curriculum dashboard. Um, and that's been really helpful as a communication tool to really streamline. Um, teachers and staff have so much uh, communication coming to them right now, so having that one place has been really nice. The other area that I've been focusing on is um, being able to see every teacher's classroom, art, gym, and music as well, our EL teacher, because um, we're obviously not in person. And so it, usually you can walk down the hallway, go into a classroom, have conversations with staff. This enables me to be able to quickly go into someone's page and click on their Google Meet, see uh, what they're working on, mm -hmm. and stay connected um, both to the students and the staff. And I think in the future here, um, as we progress throughout the school year, it'll really inform our NCSS process too, mm -hmm. because we can see that curriculum pacing throughout each page and each grade level and the collaboration that Roisin was talking about. Our PLCs are working so hard mm -hmm. together and teaming. Um, and I think that me as the administrator and the other building principals can see that, you know, have that balcony view of, of what is happening curricular wise um, and, and that's, been, that's been great. It's also been helpful to troubleshoot. So teachers are teaching mm -hmm. and I have access to their page and a parent calls and, and needs the Google Meet or is missing something, I can help behind the scenes to get them connected um, mm -hmm. while the teacher's teaching because I have access. Right, cool. and I, I like that, you know, you've kind of given me a new learning just in terms of listening mm -hmm. to how you've used the tool. Um, you know, we had a, we were having a brief conversation, Roisin, about um, last spring, and mm -hmm. you had invited me into your classroom. That's right. Well, it sounds like I can still make it even though we're remote. So maybe we could That's get together. That's a great idea. And we could talk about what role I could play in, in mm -hmm. as one of your live sessions. That would be great. Um, hopefully I wouldn't just serve as a distraction, but I no. can actually add to the learning for yeah. the students <laughs> on that particular occasion. So make sure you give me a role. I already have ideas for you. Good. Make sure you yeah. give me a role that I, I can promise. fulfill. <laughs> that I promise. I promise. But, but yeah, that would, that would be fun. So I would, would welcome that opportunity. Yep. And it would give me a better idea of, of, of how you're We'll do a guess who. I'll have to ask you some questions ahead of time. And okay. And the kids can guess who. Okay. Um, well, we'll be looking forward to that. Um, so, Roisin, yes. back to you again. Um, moving to Canvas was, we, as we mentioned, was, is not an, been an easy transition. Right. Um, it has required learning and work. Now that we are further in the year, what opportunities have Canvas given to your staff as a whole from where you sit? You met a little bit about, you talked a little bit about the collaboration piece. Correct. Um, but maybe, maybe come back to a more, more personalize it as an individual teacher. Maybe from that perspective, um, how has it, it helped support your work? I think now that the dust has settled a little bit and people are feeling more comfortable, I think um, what teachers are liking the most is that they can personalize Canvas to work for them also. Um, because it's not a one-size-fits-all, and we, as teachers we don't believe in that, the one-size-fits-all, but a kindergarten teacher can create her page to meet the needs of her students. It doesn't have to be, well, this doesn't work. You know, they can create buttons instead of modules, whereas, uh, and they don't have to use the grading, the grading aspect of it right now. You know, but the, uh, you know, us in fifth grade, we, some of us, most of us do modules, where it's a little bit more like Google Classroom. We can personalize it to work best for our kids. And that's what I think, because again, it's about the kids. I think that is one of the biggest benefits. And then seeing, every day Canvas is doing a little bit of like what Google did in the beginning when we first migrated. They start adding things based on what teachers are saying. Yeah. And I've noticed Clever, or, um, Canvas is doing that as well. You know, with now they added Cami as an extension, and then you know the Flipgrid well, that's extension. Actually, internally, so as teachers right. tell us what they need oh, and want, so we then work to integrate those apps into, that's great. The, into the program. So we're layering that in. One of the reasons why we chose Canvas is it integrates with such a variety of apps and tools. Which is so great. So that as we get, we got a number of new subscriptions this year to support the remote learning as well as in-person learning. Sure. They're valuable in both of those settings. So we've been listening to staff where we can even turn on some features like theming. I don't know what theming does, yes, right. but I heard that was an amazing thing that yes. everybody wanted. So. Yes, <laughs> even, and a shout out to Tiffany in, in, our, um, in our IT department. Yeah. She has been fabulous. But even turning on the confetti when a student turns in an assignment, I, confetti comes up on the um, screen. So, so I, have, I have two follow-up questions yes. for you on that. One is, um, so you, you've given us a clear idea of how this has um, helped support a teacher in their role as you've tried to you know, educate our students in, in their own homes. Um, but maybe from a 
from the teachers to the parent perspective. Okay. How do you, how do you think this has helped support parents support their students' work? Um, I think one of um, there's quite a few benefits. Parents can see immediately when they log in, when their child logs in, what assignments are due. There's a to-do list that shows up, and it's clear what's missing and what's not. Um, there's an announcement that, that parents get notified of. Anytime I post something in the announcements, parents are instantly notified. I did a sample conference with Big Blue Button the other day. I didn't mean to publish it, but I accidentally published it, and, I already, and then I took it down because I was just practicing, and then I already got emails from parents. I, I noticed that you invited me to a conference, so that was good. At least I knew that you know, it's working. Um, and I think um, the, the fact that they can instantly connect with me if they needed something. You know, there's an, you know they can just instantly connect. And um, their kids can't say, well, I don't know. I don't know what homework is. I don't know. Because I keep my modules published and everything. So parents can see exactly what their kids see. So they can see what's been turned in. They can click the grade button and see what, what their child is missing. So I think that's, ben that's beneficial. Okay. Yeah. Great. You know, I, I got caught up in your response there. I, I, I just lost that follow-up question. So if I... I remember it before we finish. I'll, okay. I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, so, Margaret, we know that Canvas continues to grow in its use. What are some next steps um, in the implementation of Canvas? Well, there's a next step that's kind of continually been a next step. So, we have our, with our LMS needs, we always are forecasting forward. I like your language of forecasting. Forecasting mm -hmm. forward um, what our implementation expectations are. We've been trying to be very clear with staff. You know, the first two weeks, this is what we're expecting, and then the second two weeks, and the second, the second two weeks after that, and the second two weeks after that, um, and trying to s um, set some minimum expectations so we can grow everyone's capacity. We have staff in a lot of different places, and so we use the LMS leads for guidance. We lose, we have our LMS coordinator leads at the district level that are meeting with a lot with staff and, and coaching them as well to kind of see and gauge where we are. Um, in fact, most of our staff are exceeding those expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, and which is create stress because they're ahead of where we are in our support right. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to do to kind of help this implementation is we've been looking at adding a LMS tech integration specialist position that would solely really be focused on the LMS and, and really supporting that. Their job is daily with teachers coaching that. Um, we've also are adding additional professional development for our LMS leads. Um, actually, that occurs next Tuesday to give them some more advanced training. Um, we also, at the secondary level, um, are able to begin an integration with Canvas and MyStar. So right now, there's some frustration with parents, justifiably so, that mm -hmm. some grades are in Canvas, some are in MyStar. How do we navigate this? We didn't expect staff to jump into the gradebook as quickly as they did. And uh, Canvas is new to using MyStar as a student information system to integrate with. Um, so we were able to get in with their pilot, um, and we will be doing what's called a gradebook passback, where the grades from Canvas can automatically go into MyStar, so that MyStar is still a formal record of grades, but that the parents also see it um, within Canvas. Our teachers have asked us not to take back the gradebook. They are using it. Um, one of the high school teachers said that if, if she was she heard that we wanted my star to be the official record but she still wanted to use the grade book because they're saying it's making grading easier mm -hmm. um all keeping track offering feedback um the emails i've gotten from our teacher the feedback she can provide yeah. for art has been amazing so continuing to monitor implementation adding elements of what we want staff to be doing uh, making sure we're continuing to support the leads and the coordinators with addi additional professional development, getting an additional support person if we're able to make that possible, and then um, rolling out some of the more secondary features of that grade book and making that more universal. Thank you. So I, I, I did recall okay. um, my, my prior question. Maybe it's more of a comment that I'll, I will let you guys respond to um, in terms of your thoughts on this. But one of the things that um, when I have an opportunity to talk to, you know, um, folks that are out and doing all this work at a much different level than I am, um, I, I reflect on, you know, the decision to consider a learning management system. And that we, were, we had begun talking about that last spring um, as we were experiencing some, you know, transitioning into the Google Classroom of what might be a better resource or a tool for our teachers than, than the Google Classroom. And um, so I, I, in those initial conversations, you know, I, felt that I was probably right at the same level of an understanding of what an LMS was or maybe a little bit ahead of most folks that we, we were having that discussion with. So when you take a look at, at levels of implementation, you know, we, we talk about the LMS and yeah, we, we, we agreed that it was some, a tool we should explore 
And I think Margaret began to work with staff and you know, we kind of moved through the work groups there and we, we ended up choosing an LMS. Um, so the decision around an LMS you know, was, was made with a smaller group, I'll admit, and, and with feedback from teachers and input. Um, and then work groups establishing it. But, but for me, the, the most important part of this is, is now I, I'm hearing language or, or, or people using words that say, teachers are now the experts in the district. Teachers are telling us what needs to be in the LMS. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where the innovation truly comes in. Because in, in my experience in school districts, innovation has happened at the classroom level. So if our teachers have a tool that they can develop that meets their needs and how they can best serve the students, mm -hmm. We, we found something as a district now. Mm -hmm. And I think the way we have this structured with, with, with teachers actually leading teachers and growing this, there will be a strong teacher voice in how the tool is continued to be developed. Mm -hmm. So rather, the, so I guess music to my ears is that, you know, we're not sitting at central office saying, okay, we're gonna put this app in, in, in the LMS now and, and we'll expect teachers to use it. It's exactly the opposite. Teachers are telling us what to put in the LMS. They're teaching, telling us what features they want us to help support in the LMS. Mm -hmm. and, and that's happened in a very short period of time. And that's where I go back to saying, you know, the, 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 you know, the technical and, and capacity of our staff here um, is just um, amazing. And, and in yeah. such a short period of time, this is this has turned into something that we're, we're trying to keep up with our teachers Absolutely. now. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, 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 for me, from my perspective, that, that you know, it's a good indication that we're headed in the right direction. So any comments from you regarding, you know, that you would share your insights or maybe say, well, but you, you're missing this point. No, even I would let love me know. to say, I, I love that you just said that because um, for so long, it's always been a top down, you know, this is what you're gonna do. And that has been a frustration for teachers when we think, well, if you were in the classroom, you would know that this is how it looks, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate what you said and I do appreciate Margaret saying the same, that as teachers have come to her, and saying we need this, we need that, that we're being heard. And when your teachers are happy and your teachers are supported, that <clears throat> has a trickle down effect and it affects our students. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that and we will continue to share our voice, I know we will. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's still acknowledging that we do recognize the anxiety and the stress Absolutely. that a new tool provided. It's been a big lift for our staff. Mm -hmm. They're working a lot of hours beyond the school day um, and when they're not with kids during the school day, they're building and creating right. and, and monitoring asynchronously. And, and so I think um, while I think staff are starting to see that long-term vision mm -hmm. of where this could be, because we did do this not just to support the short term, it can support a lot Absolutely. of our work yeah. long term. Yeah. Um, that was a big ask of our staff. And I think that was, that was a hard thing for the staff, knowing that they were going to have to start something brand new yeah, right. um, mm -hmm. in, in addition to remote learning. And so we recognize that and acknowledge that. Um, we thought hopefully we had the right foresight to do it for the mm -hmm. long term. Um, and I think our community has given us grace um, I think we've tried to give staff grace. I think they don't give themselves sometimes the grace they need because they're worried about not being perfect. Um, because they have everyone in their classrooms now. Parents can see it, students can right. see it, and that makes them very vulnerable. But I think what I'm hearing from the groups is that we can see where that benefit is. Um, but it's still hard for them right now, it's still work. But if we know that we can work towards something that has a benefit, yeah. then it makes it valuable and so that's but I think that's where we're getting to be we're starting to see this new beginning part mm -hmm. when you talk about transition I think we're getting into this place where we can see what it could be mm -hmm. and I think that inside out outside in approach that you were talking about that decision making approach has really encouraged um, some informal collaboration outside of our our LMS teacher leads so we have a lot of staff who were already used to using canvas mm -hmm and who have informally led um, in, in other areas. Gym, art, and music, uh, they might not necessarily have that title, but when you give the teachers that voice and that decision-making power, it does encourage that um, innovation and creativity and shared leadership, and that's something that I've been um, really happy to see. Yeah, yeah I, and again, I go back to, a, you know, from, from my end, you know, we, we, you know, superintendent's role is more organizational competence and helping develop and support culture you know I certainly should stay out of the business of which LMS you choose and how you choose to implement it um, but 
But I think, you know, for me is, is when you talk about um, w how calm I can be when I come to mm -hmm. work on any given day, um, when, when central office is in a position where we, we, we make a strategic decision for the district and then we're put in a, a position where we actually have to kind of push that and monitor folks and, you know, develop the entire plan to, to see, see where the return on the investment is, um, unfortunately, I don't stay calm very long in those environments. <laughs> Um, but when I get to come to work and I see a, a, a you know a what decision made at the at the strategic or district level, but I see the how, and then my job becomes how am I going to figure out how to continue to support this? Mm -hmm. So when teachers are are telling me we need this, we need this, we need this, that is the language I look for. Mm -hmm. It's not when central office is saying you need to do this. You show me evidence you're doing this. Um, so so that that allows us to work completely different in central office. And, and at the board level. So again, I, I mentioned earlier, it's, 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 it's what I don't hear from staff that usually causes me concern. Um, but when I hear what our needs are clearly, when I hear the support you need from central office, like with the LMS, I know we worked hard even to, to get Canvas to allow us to use a script to, to allow my start in Canvas. Yeah. Those are things that I'm like, okay, now I have a role and I can help. Those are the supports you need. What can I do and how can we continue to move this forward? So. Um, though, so yes, it's it's you know even with our current environment on this particular topic and and uh, and, and and I guess initiative as we would call it, um, I'm, I'm feeling much more comfortable coming to work the other day because I'm I'm hearing a lot more specifically about what the concerns and what the needs are, and um, and I have complete confidence in the staff that you'll you'll come up and resolve those issues. Um, you're, we're a very talented group here and and. and and uh, I guess it's almost just an expectation from this group that you'll do that because, um, because you are so committed to our kids and, and your profession. So, um, you know, even, so as I sit back and reflect on this, um, it's been, I, you know, I think we've gone through all the normal um, growth pieces that you would go through, especially under our current conditions. And uh, I just think everybody deserves a, a, a huge pat on the back for all the effort they put in and their willingness to stick with this, especially under our current conditions. I mean, we were literally, building the plane as we were flying it. I mean, th there couldn't be a, there couldn't be something a, yeah. more Perfect. accurate than that statement Perfect. now. Um, so any other comments as we, we close our session for today? I'm good. Well, thank you very much for being here. I think uh, anybody that's watched the Friday updates know that, knows that I don't like to be left alone on stage. So <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, I'll be here next week. Yes, you, okay. okay. <laughs> Weird. And, I'll, and I'll be there for you apparently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, well, once again, thank you, and I appreciate your time and your comments today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.